So you want to take your cat to Hawaii. Well, kudos to you for bringing them oh, with. Amanda. You don't have to leave them at home and miss them. You can explore the island together and have a blast. Hawaii has a long list of requirements you have to do before getting to the island, but we want to make it a lot easier for you. So let's go through it step by step. Step number one, check your cat's health records to see if they have any rabies vaccinations already. Hawaii is a rabies free island and want to keep it that way. So this whole process is all about making sure your cat is immune to rabies and then proving it to Hawaii by showing test results. Your cat's vaccination history will determine how much time you'll need to prepare before going on your trip. So if your cat has zero rabies vaccinations, it's going to take five months. If your cat has one already, it's going to take four months. And if your cat has two rabies vaccinations in their lifetime, it's gonna take three and a half months. So say you start this process the first week of April, your target month to go on your trip is gonna be in September. So a solid five months. A big chunk of that time is waiting for your test results to come back from the lab, showing that your cat has enough antibodies against rabies, and then waiting for Hawaii to receive those results and process other paperwork that you'll send them. But we'll get to more of that later. So again, check your cat's health records to see what rabies shots they need, if they're starting from scratch, if they have one or two already, and then that will determine how much time you'll need to prepare. Talk to your vet or the place you adopted your cat from if you're not able to find your cat's health records and they should be able to help you. If your cat is a kitten right now, wait until they're 10 to 15 weeks old before you travel with them. Step number two, start scheduling appointments with your vet in advance. The four appointments you'll need include rabies vaccination one, rabies vaccination two, a rabies titer test, and a health certificate appointment. Your cat must also be microchipped, which most cats are already, but ask your vet if they can implant that during one of your vaccination appointments if your cat doesn't have one. Step number three, after the first rabies vaccination, you must wait 30 days before your cat can receive the second rabies vaccination. In order to have proof of these vaccinations, ask your vet to print out two original rabies vaccination certificates and then have your vet sign and date it. Step number four, after the second rabies vaccination appointment, you must wait 21 days for your cat to build up antibodies. And then after those 21 days, you're gonna take your cat to the rabies titer appointment. But before getting tested, you must order a rat pack kit online from KSU's website. A rat pack kit includes a test tube and an ice pack that you'll bring to the appointment. Let's go through how to order the rat pack kit right now. We're going to use KSU Labs request forms. I've included links in the description below. Let's start with the Rad Pack Kit request form. First, you're going to select either Pay Online or Charge My Visa. If you pay online, you go to this link and scroll to the bottom, which is kind of confusing. Click Pay Now, Pay Online. Still, again, confusing. And then click on the View Details. Click in the, the amount that you need to cover and then enter in all your information. I would just recommend going back to the form, um, selecting whichever card you're gonna charge and then enter in your information. And then they'll just run your card for whatever amount you need. Select this Rad Pack Kit 1 box, followed by this FAVN testing box. And then enter in the amount of samples you need or amount of pets. So for Mando, I was only bringing one cat. And then the rest of this is for the lab use. After that, you're going to save this as a PDF and save it to your desktop. Once you've saved that out as a PDF, you're gonna copy this email address and go to your email, paste it in. We're gonna attach that document that we just saved, the Rat Pack Kit request form. And then in the subject, Rat Pack Kit request. And then I typed out requesting a Rat Pack Kit attached as a request form. Will you send it to this address? You can type whatever address you need it to send to. By default, they'll send it to your billing address, which was my workplace. And I would have preferred if they sent it to my shipping address. So if you need an alternate address, type it in here and then we'll send off the email. So you can either schedule this rabies titer appointment with your vet in advance when you schedule the vaccinations, or you can wait until you receive the wrap pack kit in the mail and then set the appointment. The wrap pack kit has an ice pack that you'll wanna put in the freezer the night before and then bring it with you 
to the appointment the next day and give it to your vet. If you're like me and forget to bring the ice pack to the appointment, your vet should have an extra one on hand at the clinic. On an important note, make sure the veterinarian you choose to do the vaccinations and this rabies titer test especially is familiar with the procedure and does these often. I learned the hard way and put my cat through a lot of stress because I didn't know the veterinarian was inexperienced with blood draws. This is a very intense procedure because they draw blood from the cat's jugular vein. Mando was left very lethargic for 48 hours and I felt really bad for him. So make sure your vet is experienced and things will go a lot smoother. Ask your vet if they can fill the tube with the least amount of blood possible. That way your cat isn't left super lethargic after the appointment. Also ask them if they can sedate your cat before the blood draw so your cat will avoid any stress or pain. Your cat could potentially wet themselves due to sedation, which happened to mine. So put a pee pad in their carrier when you take them to the appointment. And if it does happen, you can use a cloth with warm water and soap to clean them. Step number five, there are two documents you'll need to fill out and include with the Rat Pack kit when you send it back to the lab. Those two forms are an FAVN form and a credit card payment form. Let's go through those forms right now. Now let's look at the FAVN report form. This is the one that you'll bring to your appointment for the rabies titer and give to the veterinarian. You can print it out or you can give them the link and then they can type their, their information and your information here, print it out, sign and date it. Again, you can print it out and, and fill out some of this, but I would recommend just having your veterinarian go through this and fill it out. That way it's, it, all the information is correct. And the last form is the credit card authorization form. You can either pay online again, go through those same steps I showed you before, or you can just select these boxes, type in one or two, wh whatever amount of pets you're bringing, type in the amount that it adds up to. I don't think you need to worry about this and then just enter in your card information. The veterinarian will include this FAVN report form and the credit card form with your wrap pack kit. That will include the test tube and the ice pack. And then you'll ship all this together from FedEx that same day. The good news is if your test results are successful and your cat has enough antibodies against rabies, you can travel with them for 36 months to other countries that require the same thing. Step number six, at the end of the rabies titer appointment, the vet will take the blood sample, pack it with ice into the rat pack kit that has a prepaid label. And then you're gonna take the rat pack kit to FedEx and ship it off that same day. Also include the FAVN report form and the credit card payment form with the rat pack kit when you send it off. The KSU lab is taking over six weeks or 42 days to process the blood samples and send the results back. You can check the status of the results by entering your cat's microchip number on KSU's website. Since the lab can experience delays and Hawaii requires the results sooner, that's why we give ourselves months in advance of preparation time. Step number seven, to play it safe, only buy tickets after you've received successful lab results. That way you don't run the risk of missing a deadline and then having to cancel your trip. When you're shopping around for tickets, either fly with Alaska or Hawaiian Airlines. They're the only two pet friendly ones I know of that allow your pet in the cabin when flying to Hawaii. The other airlines will put them in the cargo bay and we want to avoid that. Also choose a flight that gets you to the island between the hours of 8 a.m. and 3.30 p.m. Hawaii time. There's a calculator online you can use to figure out the time zone differences. This window of time is when your cat will be inspected at the airport. If you fly in on a holiday, they'll still perform the inspection. They're just gonna charge you a little extra. Step number eight. So you've received the lab results and your cat is cleared for travel. Now you have to fill out a few more forms and then send it all together to Hawaii. The first form is a dog and cat import form. Let's go through that right now. Okay, so when you Google dog and cat import form, the first page is the one you'll wanna click on. It'll pull up this PDF form that you can fill in digitally. So the first box you'll fill in is the date of your arrival. And then the second box is gonna be how many pets you're taking. And then you'll type in your pet's name, the species, feline or cat, country from, United States, their age, their microchip number, their breed, their sex, are they neutered? In my case, yes. And then their coat color is orange and white. 
And then you're gonna select which airport you're flying into. We flew to Kauai, so we checked Lahui. And then you'll type in your last first name, all your basic information here. And then this is important, you'll type in the address of where you're staying on the island. In my case, it was a Airbnb. And then you'll select if you're military or civilian. And then you're gonna select which program you're applying for. If you are traveling to Oahu, you're going to select the DAR program. And that's gonna cost $185. And then if you're traveling to Maui, Kona, or Kauai, you're gonna select the neighboring island inspection permit box here. And that one is 165. Um, it's important to note that amount because you'll type it in this box here depending on which program you checked if you checked the one for Oahu you're gonna type in 185 but since we went to Kauai you'll type in the 165 and then you'll select the cashier's check um, I selected the current rabies vaccine certificate and I think the last thing you'll need to type in is your name here um, and then once you print it out you'll sign it with uh, your signature and that's it once you filled it out if you have a printer you can select the print icon or you can save it out as a PDF it says with your changes and save it to your desktop and you know take it to FedEx and print it there Again, once you've printed it out, you'll want to sign it with a pen and date it, and then you're good to go. The second thing you have to include is a cashier's check written out to the Department of Agriculture. If you're unfamiliar with cashier's checks, just go to your local bank and ask your teller to fill one out, and again, write it out to your Department of Agriculture. When you fill out the cashier's check, if you're traveling to Oahu, again, it's the DAR program, so that's $185 that you'll write on the check or it's gonna be the neighboring island inspection permit if you're traveling to Kona, Maui, or Kauai, and that amount is the $165 that you would put on the check. The third piece of documentation you'll need is your flight information that you'll print off from the airline's website or from your email. This will show the departure and arrival dates along with your flight numbers. The fourth and final documentation is the two original rabies vaccination certificates that your vet signed and dated. Step nine, send the dog and cat airport form, the cashier's check, your flight information, and the rabies vaccination certificates all in one envelope to Hawaii Quarantine Station. These documents must be received by the Animal Quarantine Station at least 30 days before if you're traveling to Kona, Maui, or Kauai, and 10 days before if you're traveling to Oahu. But if you can, send them more like 40 days before, just in case. Step number 10, an inspection of your cat will happen once you land on the island so you can leave the airport with them and not be quarantined for 30 days. If you're traveling to Oahu, they'll perform what is called a DAR inspection or direct airport release. If you're traveling to Kona, Maui, or Kauai, they'll perform a NIIP inspection or neighboring island inspection permit. The only difference between the inspections is that the NIIP inspection requires you to have a permit physically printed out on hand with you on travel day and you have to show that to the Humane Society staff. Oahu does not require this extra step of getting this physical permit. So the Humane Society staff are the ones that will meet you at the terminal gate hey right when you arrive on the island the, uh, and will perform the inspection. They'll schedule the inspection once they receive the lab results, clearing your cat for travel, and once they receive your flight information. Google search the Humane Society of whichever island you're traveling to, find their phone number, call them and tell them that you either need a DAR inspection or a neighboring island inspection permit. Step number 11, apply a tick and flea treatment within 14 days of your trip. You can do it 10 days before, five days before. They just want you to do it pretty close to when you leave. The treatment is fast acting and will kill ticks and fleas after 12 to 24 hours and then protect your cat up to a month. During the inspection at the airport, they'll look for any ticks or fleas and if your cat has any, they won't let you leave. Hawaii does not accept the brand Revolution, so I went with Frontline. It's pretty easy to use, I'll show you. You take the bottle with the liquid, squeeze it at the base of the neck above the shoulder blades on your cat, 
part the fur, make sure the liquid seeps down onto the skin. It should kill the ticks and fleas and protect them from any future problems. Step number 12, schedule an appointment with your vet to get a health certificate. If you didn't schedule this appointment in advance, it's okay. Just make sure the appointment takes place within 10 days of your trip. During this appointment, they'll perform a physical exam and make sure your cat has all the necessary shots for travel. They're also gonna check your cat's health records and make sure they have all the required vaccinations. Make sure your vet prints out three copies of the health certificate and then signs and dates each one of them. Step number 13, follow up with everybody along the way. Call the quarantine station, contact the Humane Society or the lab, and make sure you're on track so you don't miss any deadlines. And finally, step number 14, on travel day, place your documents in a protective case. This includes three copies of your health certificate signed and dated by your vet and the neighboring island inspection permit if you're traveling to Kona, Maui, or Kauai. Again, Oahu does not require the permit but they do need to see the health certificate. These documents will then be checked by travel agents throughout your travel day. Let's go through and recap all the steps. Step number one, check your cat's health records, see if they have any rabies shots. Your preparation time will either take five months, four months, or three and a half months based on that vaccination history. Step number two, start scheduling appointments. Two rabies vaccinations, a rabies titer test, and a health certificate appointment. Step three, after your cat receives the first vaccination, you have to wait 30 days before receiving the second rabies vaccination. Step four, after your cat has received that second rabies shot, they must wait 21 days to build up antibodies. During those 21 days, order a rat pack kit from KSU's website. Once you receive the rat pack kit in the mail, schedule an appointment with a credible veterinarian to perform a rabies titer test. Step five, include the two forms in the rat pack kit, the FAVN form and the credit card payment form. Step six, after the rabies titer appointment, take the rat pack kit with the prepaid label and send it off from FedEx that same day. The lab will take six weeks to get the lab results back and Hawaii needs the results 30 days before your trip. Step seven, buy your tickets once you've received the test results, clearing your cat for travel, and fly with a pet-friendly airline. And make sure to get to the island between the hours of 8 a.m. and 3.30 p.m. Hawaii time. Step eight was filling out a dog and cat import form and getting a cashier's check written out to the Department of Agriculture. Step nine, send the dog and cat import form, the cashier's check, your flight information, and two rabies vaccination certificates in one envelope to the Hawaii quarantine station. It must be received by Hawaii 30 days before your trip, but again, send it more like 45 days. With each inspection, they'll check for ticks or fleas, they'll check for the health certificate, and if you're traveling to Maui, Kona, or Kauai, they'll check for the NIIP permit. But again, Oahu does not require it. Step 11 was apply a tick and flea treatment within 14 days of your trip. Step 12 was schedule an appointment to get a health certificate within 10 days of your trip and make sure your vet signs and dates three copies. Step 13 was follow up with everybody so you stay on track. And step 14, place your documents in a protective case and be ready to show them on travel day. Now you might be asking yourself, is it really worth it to go through all these steps to take your cat to Hawaii? What if it's just a seven to 10 day trip? Should you do it? I say yes, absolutely do it. You're gonna create so many core memories with your cat. It was amazing watching my cat Mando experience a new place, kayaking together, hiking through the jungle, walking the beaches, and meeting new people. (laughs) (laughs) All right, make sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel for more upcoming cat tip videos. Thank you for choosing Cat Mando for all your cat tips and needs and fun travels.